from okay. Indonesia. But so I it's think no, it's, it's I no think problem it's, if they speak or using Indonesian, maybe. But uh, <laughs> maybe the other speakers from Hong Kong and Russia maybe don't understand the speaking, but it's okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is an international think... webinar with uh, totally Indonesian participants, the audience, and the speaker from Russia and Hong Kong, of course, right? Yes, 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 that's right. Uh, maybe the next publication can be spread into community outside of Indonesia. If, it may have several community uh, which have collaborates collaboration with teachers from uh, teachers and lectures from other country like ASEAN country and also some oh. from Asia Pacific. Maybe next time we can spread the information into the He's groups. Also... Yes, definitely. That's something that could possibly happen in the future. Huge possibility. Yeah. Uh, maybe I will not present in the uh, beginning of the meeting or the webinar because I still have little task that I have to do dealing with sending the fund off for my son in Pondok Pesantren, so I have to go okay. to the post office to have some uh, traditional payment using, what is oh. it called, from Wessel Post. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. I, think, I think everyone in here, the yeah. audience and the speakers are understand your situation. Yeah. So, sapa-sapa ini? Oh, sudah, Pak. Oh, ini ada yang di YouTube ada banyak banget nih. Boleh disapa dulu ya? Oh, iya. Ya, bisa. Hmm. Ada yang dari Oh, Kak Fatoni ada Kak Edi, Kak Ratna udah pada stay semua. Pak Edi Susan, ini Ed, Pak apa Kak ya? <laughs> Hadir dari Universitas Kendal. Oke, okay, halo. Untuk selamat siang juga untuk Nengah Punia dari Bali, selamat siang dari Semarang. Ada Okta Brilian dari Sekum Ungaran, oke. Okay. Ada Kak Elia, Kak Tenel, Kak Nur Fitri, Kak lagi nih, Dahayu, Kak Irfan, ada Kak Maulida, dan Kak oh, Kepegawaian dari Salam, selamat datang. Selanjutnya, oh ya, udah banyak banget yang hadir ini, Kak, dari Universitas Esa Ukul, selamat bergabung, Universitas Raharjo, silakan bergabung. Dari Universitas Sekom, oh Sekom banyak sekali nih yang gabung sekarang. Ada lagi dari, mana lagi nih ya? Kalimantan Tengah, selamat siang, selamat bergabung. Oke, kayaknya itu aja. Kayaknya tuh udah banyak banget yang ikut di Youtube juga nih. Bakal rame banget ini. Oh, Pak Dari sudah datang belum nih? Sudah, Pak Danang, apakah sudah? sudah? sudah. Ini ada akun uh, Danang WS, apakah ini atau tidak ya? Oh iya, Pak. Danang Coba WS. Di... Bisa di chat kemungkinan Pak Danang untuk... Oke. Okay. Apakah betul Pak Danang? Atau Pak Danang yang lain? Pasti Pak Danang. Sepertinya Danang sih Pak Danang. <laughs> uh, untuk ada pemberitahuan juga untuk Dokter Tan akan bergabung nanti di 30 di setelah 30 menit karena beliau ada jadwal lain atau acara lain jadi ya beliau akan sedikit terlambat untuk bergabung 
di webinar kali ini. Tapi santai saja pasti ya kan. Oke. Okay. Ini Danang ada dua, yang satu Banjar Negara, teman saya itu yang satu. Eh, Danang Banjar Negara ini bohos. Berarti yang Danang Banjar Negara bukan ya, Pak? Bukan, bukan. Danang ini Danangnya itu Danang Hidayatullah. Biasanya Danang ha, harusnya ya. <laughs> ini belum Danang hadir berarti. Ya. Danang W ini coba di Danang Sepertinya nah. banyak yang namanya Pak Danang ya. <laughs> uh, uh, di pin coba videonya, Mas. Ya, oh, belum aktif. Videonya belum aktif. Oh iya, belum. Oh, I see. Halo Mas Ferry Valenka, how's luck? Good. Uh, mostly up from Indonesian Teachers Association or Ikatan Guru Indonesia. So Mbak Anissa and Mbak Azid, uh, yeah. how many participants are there in YouTube? My voice is not so clear so that you have to touch your ears. So, sorry, this microphone is a small microphone, so I don't know exactly the quality of my voice. It's fine, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, but yes, we can clear? hear you, we can hear yes, you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you can hear, but do you understand my speaking? The most important thing is that you understand my speaking. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ya, Mbak Azeda and Mbak Anissa. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, it has been one ten, and um, I don't know exactly. Master Nam should be called. Do you have the number of Master Nam, or should I send the number of Master Nam so that there's someone who can talk him? Maybe or... Mbak Anissa. Sorry. Uh, you have Mr. Danang numbers? No, I I think Mr. Joseph has it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think so. I I think we should just start the meeting. It's already 10 minutes here, the over 10 minutes. So I think we should just start the webinar. So, guys, it. Okay. I think you may start. Yes, yeah, thank you. Oke, okay, selamat siang semuanya. Selamat datang dan selamat bergabung di acara webinar internasional pada hari ini. Untuk acara webinar internasional pada hari ini berjudul Exploring the Possibilities of AR and RVR Technologies yang ini. Dan selamat siang semuanya, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Yang terhormat Bapak Rektor Universitas Tekom, Bapak Dr. Joseph M. Kom, yang terhormat Bapak Danang Hidayatullah MM, yang terhormat Bapak Mampuono MKOM, dan yang terhormat Profesor Dr. Tan Cewei, dan yang terhormat Dr. Petrakov Pesili. Serta yang berbahagia Bapak Ibu dan teman-teman peserta webinar yang telah hadir dalam acara webinar internasional pada siang hari ini. Puji syukur kita panjatkan pada Tuhan Yang Maha Esa, berkatnya kita bisa berkumpul kembali dalam acara webinar internasional ini meski harus bertatap muka lagi secara online karena pandemi COVID ini. Semoga kita semua selalu sehat dan dalam lindungannya yang mendapat bencana juga semoga lekas pulih. Untuk webinar kali ini berjudul Exploring Beyond the Possibilities of IR or VR Technology akan uh, diadakan oleh Universitas Tekom yang bekerja sama dengan Sevastopol State University Rusia dan City University Hong Kong dan Ikatan Guru Indonesia. Untuk selanjutnya akan saya bacakan susunan acaranya. Yang pertama adalah pembukaan. Yang kedua adalah menyanyikan lagu Indonesia Raya Bersama. Yang ketiga open speech dari Bapak Rektor Universitas Tekom Semarang. Yang ketiga adalah sambutan dari Pak Danang Hidayatullah MM. Dan yang keempat adalah speaker dari... Oh, maaf. 
speaker oleh Dr. Petra Kofili dan yang kelima adalah speaker Profesor Dr. Tan Chewei dan yang keenam adalah speaker Bapak Pamu Pamang Puono Mkom. Selanjutnya akan dilanjutkan untuk sesi tanya jawab dan penutup. Untuk acara webinar pada siang hari ini adalah pembukaan. Mari webinar internasional kali ini kita buka bersama-sama dengan doa menurut agama dan keyakinan masing-masing. Berdoa di Oke, okay, berdoa selesai. Untuk acara selanjutnya adalah menyanyikan lagu Indonesia Raya bersama. Untuk waktu dipersilahkan. Oke, terima kasih. Untuk acara selanjutnya adalah opening speech dari beliau, Bapak Dr. Joseph M. Kom. Beliau merupakan Rektor Universitas Sains dan Teknologi Stekom Semarang. Beliau merupakan e-commerce entrepreneur sejak 2 tahun 2002. Beliau juga merupakan kabit hubungan kemitraan strategis penyelarasan industri ikatan guru vokasi Indonesia. Untuk Bapak Dr. Joseph M. Kom, waktu kami persilahkan. Ya, terima kasih Kak Aset. Uh, sebelumnya saya ngomong dulu dalam bahasa Indonesia ya Bisa terdengar suaranya dengan jelas? Terdengar Pak hmm, Oke okay. uh, Terima kasih untuk semua teman-teman dan uh, pemerhati Dan yang peduli dengan uh, pendidikan Indonesia yang hadir pada siang hari ini Bersama-sama kita melalui webinar ini dapat mewujudkan uh, Kemajuan untuk pendidikan di Indonesia pada umumnya. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> The honorable our speaker today, uh, Mr. Danang Hidayatullah, as a chairman of IGI or uh, Indonesian Teacher Association, atau ikat. Uh, Ikatan Guru Indonesia. Then Mr. Mampuono Mcom as Teacher Partnership Motivator, and Professor Dr. Tan Cho Wee as Director of Hong Kong Education Bureau's Program, and Dr. Petra Kov Fasli as Director of Information System Department of Sefsu, and also all of distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, may I first take this occasion to pay tribute to all of the audiences of this international webinar with the title, 
exploring beyond the possibilities of ER or VR technology, held by Stecom University, collaboration with Hong Kong Education Bureau's program, Sevastopol State University in the Russian Federation, and also Indonesian Teacher Association or IAGI. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to deliver these welcome remarks at the opening of this international webinar. May I first take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation, as well as extend a cordial welcome to all of the audiences, in particular, all the speakers of today's event. Ladies and gentlemen, the topics of today's webinar is about the ER or PR technology. Now, we are facing revolution industry 4.0 era where technology has become basis in community activities. In today's webinar, we find two special terms, ER or augmented reality and PR or virtual reality. For your information, virtual reality replaces reality with a completely new 3D digital environment. Meanwhile, augmented reality or ER overlays digital content on the top of the real world. These technologies have helped human tasks easier. Many industries that require a training for requirement of their employees to a specific job. Hospitals and astronauts also use this technology to do their training before the actual real life project. Ladies and gentlemen, talk about exploring beyond the possibilities of ER or VR technology as the title of this webinar. The impact of ER or VR technology will give more impact to our real life in the future. As quoted by Kelly Kutz, chief product uh, officer at uh, Commerce Tools, it's convinced that when ER and VR come of age, the impact of the technologies will be comparable to the internet boom of 1995. ER and VR could have as big an impact on society as the internet. It means that most occupations will change and, and more people will have to work with technology. As a student majoring in IT in particular, this can have a positive impact if you master and take great opportunity to your future career. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope through this webinar, we can get more information about ER or VR technology and how these two terms impact in our life. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the International Affairs Organization of Stecom University for making this international webinars. And finally, I wish you to enjoy the webinars today. Let's pray that all our effort remains in the blessing of God Almighty. Amen. Thank you. Oke, okay, terima kasih atas sambutannya untuk Bapak Dr. Joseph. Untuk ya, acara sama -sama. selanjutnya adalah Oke, okay, untuk acara selanjutnya adalah pemaparan materi dari beliau Bapak Danang Hidayah Tobloh, MM. Beliau merupakan Chairman of IG atau Ikatan Guru Indonesia. Untuk Bapak Danang Hidayah Tobloh, apakah sudah standby, Pak? Pak Danang? Ya. Masih mute. Also. Oh, oh ya. Yeah. Uh, waktu kami persilahkan, monggo, Pak. Baik, thank you. Do I need to speak in English or bahasa? Oke. Okay. Is my voice clear enough? Yes. Do I need to speak in English or bahasa? I think uh, to you, Mister. <laughs> if you want to speak in English, it's okay. But if you want to speak in Indonesia, it's okay, please. Oke. Okay. I try to present this in English, but Please do not interrupt until my presentation is finished, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody, especially for Mr. 
Joseph as uh, rector Universitas Science and Technological Computer Stecom and also to all speakers Mr. Mampuno Professor Tan Chi Wei from Hong Kong and also Dr. Petra Kovacili thank you from Russia This is a great opportunity for me to present what we have done in the in IGI program, especially in relation with today webinar theme about the virtual reality. And please allow me to share the short presentation that I have here. Okay, I'm going to present on IGR Virtual Reality, our Pioneer Schools program. This is a co comprehensive case study from 10 provinces. Maybe I would like to start from our situation today, which is, uh, this is really big challenge for us to improve, to encourage our students to motivate them on how they can collaborate each other, how they uh, explore their learning process, and then how they use a variety of sources for their learning. This is a short uh, picture on how uh, our students in different area, they're using different method of learning like in urban area, they use video conference and online tasks. And in sub uh, urban area, they use uh, audio conference, online tasks, a lot of voice note and chat group, online tasks, television or radio. And uh, for the France region or Daerah Tiga T, they use Voice note, chat group, online test, teacher visit one by one, or group visit and television on radio. This is just a big picture on how virtual reality used by teachers to motivate era, like in Japan, they use the virtual reality to connect their lesson and the reality. There's one good book that is Managing Millennials. So there are two points inside. The first one on how encourage freedom to explore and then and those a learning culture. So that's why in Iggy, our vision, our big vision in the future is on how we uh, can encourage our members to be world-class community and proud and outstanding achievers. So that's why our tagline in this period is Iggy for Indonesia and also Iggy for Iggy Go International. So what is the connection between this book with our uh, condition today? So if you can see in this diagram about uh, Z generation, Y generation and X generation, also baby boomer and great generation, we try to develop, to improve what the but their skills in different uh, in different uh, diagrams. So like in Z generation, we try to improve and develop their creativity, and in Y generation, we try to improve their intellectual curiosity. So in summary, the virtual reality technology can encourage students to display an intellectual curiosity, creativity, and collaboration. This is really really important because the connection collaboration is part of our learning process so what virtual reality can do in especially in indian education in indonesia the first one uh, it can be increased teaching achievement like uh, there's one research from japan from the university in japan that virtual reality can increase student concentration state by six times and also from Westwick University, uh, virtual reality can increase positive emotion and memorized ability. 
and the second one is uh, virtual reality so with the advantage is virtual reality with cloud computing system are the best combination to fill in facility gap with low distribution support and last one is how the virtuality can minimize cost that we have as we know that teachers we don't have much money on how to buy all of the tools the software and hardware of virtual reality but we are lucky in IGI because we supported by biggest uh, company of virtual reality in Indonesia named uh, Sinta VR Media Lab. So we don't have to spend money to to do or to conduct all the program that related to virtual reality. We use this program starting 2019 when Media Lab had a roadshow to Java, to Bali and around Java. And why we use this platform? Because uh, Media Lab is an all-in-one virtual reality platform for education that enables all teachers to create and modify their own virtual reality-based learning content without having to spend time coding and investing in expensive devices. Maybe some of us are still thinking that coding is more important uh, in doing the virtual reality, but the Media Lab is more simple. So that's why we start to collaborate and cooperate with Media Lab so we can uh, share each other about the new uh, technology this one to virtual reality. In 2020, we have a training of trainer. And after that, we launched for 100 schools virtual reality pioneer. And this I'm going to show you what we have done, this is the data that we have, because all of we, what we've done is, uh, we use research as based on, uh, I mean, uh, we use research to make sure that all of training, all of the workshop that we have is measurable and also uh, we can evaluate from the data. We trained to 1,015 teachers and also 115, 500 schools. And this platform is already used by more than 10,000, more than 15,000 students. This is a short uh, information about our school, a uh, VR Pioneer Skills Program, that this program is being implemented uh, in 34 provinces in Indonesia to make selected schools the piano of your technology in education and designed for six months. And we have teams, what we call with the uh, trainer VR. This is the milestone the step that we have. First, we launched and in the for one, like school and teachers team will be introduced to virtual reality. This is the basic one. And this method for teaching in the classroom as well in uh, PJJ, Majalan Jarak Jauh. And the team of teachers also taught to do self-identification about school readiness and also help to decide what method is right to, for the child. We have some evaluation, like in evaluation one, this evaluation process focus on the influence of virtual reality to improve the first one is emotional judgment the second uh, is, uh, of understanding the material and then the third one is easy of remembering material in evaluation the next step evaluation two this evaluation process focus on the influence of VR to improve first increasing learning achievement then the second increasing analytical thinking and the last one is report this best this is for our evaluations so the schools uh, make a report analysis through systematic experiments. This is uh, as part of our process in collaboration with Milia Lab on how we encourage uh, teachers, not only in Jakarta, but also in other provinces, that they have right to uh, learn the same things in, uh, in, uh, in this pandemic era. This is the provinces. And also we appreciate to all of the trainer that uh, work. Then I just want to inform that no one of us 
paid by Milia Lab. We just share our knowledge. So as like in EIGI, motor sharing and growing together. So in uh, terms, we appreciate all of the trainers. Uh, and we motivate them also to be a master trainer. This is the data that we have from Run of Indonesia. We have student feedback from 10 provinces that mention that 80% increase in positive emotional learning used by virtual reality method. Means what we have done during the workshop is effective to the student's emotion, student engagement, and then student exploration, including collaboration. On the other hand, a 94% increase in understanding of subject learning used by virtual reality method. This is very interesting because this is the first that we use uh, virtual reality. We try to uh, encourage our teacher and then students to try to use different technology in their class, in the learning process. This is some data that we have comparing on how the conventional teaching with virtual and also with a virtual reality. We can see data here and okay the last one is on maybe on march next month on or april and on july we will launch a master teacher program in 34 provinces we will select maybe two uh, represent that if from each province and then we will train them we will give them software and then also hardware and after that their job is only to share their what they know, the knowledge, their knowledge, and then also what they get from the training to other teachers, to other school. So uh, this program, the master teacher program in 34 provinces, is to create master teacher. You will become teacher and coach in each province, and master teacher can also provide online training to all college in Indonesia. This is uh, connect with our motto: sharing and growing together and also as i mentioned before that eg will go to international so we try to open also for surface asia and all of the master trainer based on our conversation with milia lab we will send all of the master uh, teacher master trainer to go around uh, Southeast asia to teach to share their knowledge to other school in this area Last one is report with book, uh, create book report that will measure the result of each test. So this based on our training again, we focus on research so we can measure what we have done and then we can evaluate for the next uh, step. To play the short video. Maybe some of you still confused about what is the virtual reality and then what is the media lab content. Lab, space, or even back 200 years ago? Virtual reality can bring us there. But making virtual reality content for education is hard for most teachers. They need to have good coding and 3D skill and powerful device. They don't have time and money to do that. It makes a big gap supply and demand for VR education content. But now, don't worry! We have Milia Lab. Milia Lab is the only one VR platform for education. It helps teachers make their own VR content without single line of code. With Milia Lab, 
teacher can create VR education content using medium to low spec PC. To GB RAM? No problem, it works too. It's simply using drag and drop method. All VR interaction features has been integrated. Teacher can download assets and templates from cloud. Choose interaction. Make a simple quiz for a cognitive assessment. Make a classroom. Tell the viewer works for student to see VR content which made by teacher. They can explore everything and access quiz mode. With Mila Lab, teacher can increase student concentration up to six times. Also, increase teaching achievement. In doing so, Mila Lab can significantly reduce cost for school lab, simulation, and machine facilities up to 96%. Mila Lab can increase modern skills, cognitive flexibility, creativity, positive emotion, decision making, and empathy. Mila Lab also decreases centralized facility and help democratize technology with low cost. It is the time for us to take the education leap with affordable virtual reality system with Milia Lab. Join us! Okay. So I just want to summarize that uh, whatever we do in our learning process, at least it can cover the pedagogy of inquiry because the inquiry is uh, also important before you think about the higher order thinking skills. Why uh, the pedagogy of inquiry is important? Because the first one, we have to think how the learning process is uh, explored. And the second, how our students can use the variety of sources. And then the last one, how students can collaborate each other. And uh, using the virtual reality, whatever the platform that you use, it can uh, help us to encourage and motivate our students to become better uh, learners. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Thank you, Mr. Danang. Terima kasih banyak. Jadi beliau tadi udah menjelaskan begitu banyak tentang salah satunya adalah kecepatan internet yang buruk untuk video conference jarak jauh dan bagaimana virtual reality dapat digunakan oleh guru untuk mengajar juga dan beberapa rencana dan target tahun 2021 tadi ya Pak yang mulai dari program master di program master guru di 34 provinsi terus program Miss Asia dan rilis buku laporan itu oh, ini sudah ada beberapa pertanyaan nanti di ya, dan... tanya jawab di terakhir ya Pak ya nggak apa-apa ya Pak Oh, Oke, okay. okay, untuk terima kasih untuk pemaparan materinya Pak Danang, saya lanjut ke acara selanjutnya. Untuk acara selanjutnya adalah pemaparan materi dari Mr. Petrakov Vesili, beliau merupakan Direktur Departemen Sistem Informasi di... Iya, Kak? Oh, maaf. Beliau merupakan Direktur Departemen Sistem Informasi di CSSU atau Sevastopol State University, Rusia. Untuk uh, Kak Aze? Iya, gimana? Iya, uh, jadi ada perubahan sedikit. Oh, iya, jadi iya, iya. setelah, oh. ya, oh. mampu dulu setelah ini. Okay. Ya. Hmm. Oh, iya, maaf untuk para audiens. Untuk Pak Mampuono masih standby ya, Pak? Ya. Yeah. Oke, okay. untuk Bapak Mampuono, uh, beliau merupakan Technopreneur Fit, uh, maaf, Technopreneurship Motivator. Untuk Bapak Mampuono, silakan Pak. You will use English language or Indonesian language? Oh, mikrofonnya oh, mati, Pak. Masih an masih mute. Masih mute. Di... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. Ya, yeah, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. As usual, I will try to use English because this is a seminar international. But sometimes 
maybe as an interruption, I will use Indonesian or maybe Japanese. Selamat siang, Mas Danang. Uh, the new uh, general leader of Ikatan Guru Indonesia, Indonesian Teacher Association. Sehat, Mas? Yeah, sehat. Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you for inviting to join this webinar. Yeah, okay. And uh, uh, the Honorable, the Rector of Stakeholm University, and then also Professor Tan, and the speaker from Rahasia. I always forget the name, uh, Patrovsky. Oh, I, I don't know exactly the name, but uh, uh, good morning in Russia because it's still 9 a.m. Okay. For, uh, Hello. Yeah, okay. I'll try to share my presentation. Yeah, uh, this is my presentation, the Interpretation Immersion Technology for Teacher Trainers. Yeah, do you see my presentation? I'll try to present this in the... Yeah, we can see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, because this is about virtual reality and of course the augmented reality and also mixed reality. Uh, we call that as the immersion technology or immersive technology. So I try to perform the uh, PowerPoint that is uh, adopt the three dimensional object like this. Uh, hopefully that, uh, can you see the B and then also uh, the turning uh, tower watch like this. Uh, this is something simple that a uh, teacher can get that from uh, Google. And then also maybe I'll try to practice this. Uh, uh, by using virtual reality, everything uh, more interesting and then like what Mas Danang perform in the presentation that uh, concentration maybe and also the achievement of the teachers and also the student will be advanced better. So uh, I'll try to go to the next presentation, but uh, like I say that this is a little bit hard. Uh, it takes a rather bit time for having the presentation, but uh, okay, uh, it's performed all right really well. Uh, maybe the speaker have introduced me to the audience, but I'll try. I've made the button, I mean, uh, the buttons that uh, can be clicked and then there will be an introduction and also the uh, uh, record breaking from Mori, but uh, I have to be, uh, next time maybe I have to anticipate the reaction of the uh, presentation using the three dimensional object so that uh, <laughs> it stuck, but um, I want to say that <clears throat> in this presentation, uh, I will focus on the uh, immersion or how we immersed. We seems like to be uh, in an atmosphere. We seems to be like in the real atmosphere, but it's virtual because uh, our senses, our five senses, especially our vision, our eyes, and then also our <clears throat> overall senses, that is our ears, and then also uh, our skin, our tongue, uh, everything from five senses has been affected by the virtual reality so that we are immersed 
uh, we are plunged, we are absorbed into an experience uh, of the virtual uh, reality that everything seems to be real. Okay, uh, I cut a little uh, trouble with the presentation because maybe it's rather a bit hard for our uh, computer. So I will show you show you in uh, not in presentation in but uh, like this maybe yeah uh, this is the thing that I want to show you seeing the battle and this is about Mr. Seya Soprana that's given the Muri record for Iggy and then uh, this is about the literacy with the method of Manu Belling and then <clears throat> I will go to the next, hopefully this really work and I'll try to what's so called, yeah, uh, I'll try to show once more because this is not so cool if we don't uh, show everything like this. This is a little question, which one is more realistic, 2D or 3D? If you have a special device or console or something that can make your visual, make your eye to see everything in front of you like the real object, uh, maybe you will choose 3D then because in 3D I can click like this. This is like a real human being. This is just an object of 3D or this one, the P. Uh, okay. So this is in PowerPoint and everybody, every teachers in Indonesia, mostly the audiences of uh, this webinar for teachers and I think they can make something like this. Now let's go to the next, yeah. So technology has uh, changed very fast, even uh, everything that happens today is unpredictable. So talking about the immersive technology, if you, uh, you have a technology that is immersive, it means that it make the user can immersed into virtual reality. How or what is the immersion? It is a perception of being physically present in a non-physical world, the perception is created by surrounding of you as the user of the virtual reality system in images, sound, or other stimuli that provide an engrossing total environment, cool total environment. So immersive technology creates a simulated three dimensional world that a user can manipulate and explore while feeling as if he were in that world. Scientists, theorists, or maybe engine uh, expert design dozens of devices and applications to achieve these goals, like Melia Lab that has been taken as a collaborator with Ikatan Kuru Indonesia that is brought to 10 provinces by Mastana and team uh, with a special device, special headset. Everything look real virtually in front of us. If I click this, uh, this is a, my 
little daughters call this uh, apella. <laughs> this is spider, <laughs> spider movement, and the spider can uh, turn round the flying island. It's a fantasy, but it's reality. If you use your device, if you use your tools uh, like uh, uh, mounted uh, vision that can you use as a headset, you can see that as a realistic things. So to make everything in uh, digital reality or virtual reality, immersed fully, uh, what's so called as a full immersion, uh, there should be a creation of a sense to be immersed. That's the five senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, taste must perceive the digital environment to be as, as <clears throat> physically real. So the immersive technology can perceptually fool the senses of the senses, our five senses of us through panoramic 3D display visual. Like what you can see from the uh, performance of the presentation of Master and just now. Uh, uh, those are uh, atmosphere like uh, statues or maybe temples or maybe a location in Indonesia. If the 3D display is like the real atmosphere, like the real object, it make our senses, especially in visual, immersed fully. And then go to the surround sound acoustics. Sound affect so much to our experience. And then uh, haptic and force feedback take time. So by having the uh, haptic and force feedback, it make the virtual realities like the real things around us. And then smell replication. You know that uh, you have gone to four dimensional, so five dimensional or seven dimensional uh, arena or a playground that you can enjoy everything they like you will really enjoy that in the real life. Smell replication. You can smell something, but it's just a replication. And then taste replication. Everything can be, uh, these senses can be fooled by replication. That's technology. This one, I've just made this. Uh, this is an object that we downloaded from Google, and then uh, we just use the uh, Microsoft uh, three-dimensional paint and then also Microsoft three-dimensional viewer. We can, for instance, write down something like this, Mr. Mampuono. Okay. So seems that this is three-dimensional, but actually uh, this is virtual. And we can give an example, the use of uh, for 12 reality, NASA astronaut and expedition 59 flight engineer, Christina Kotz, wears a VR headset for the faction study that is exploring how microgravity affects the astronaut's motion, orientation and distance perception. This is in 2019. And then uh, the study about the immersive experience really show that uh, by having an ex experience, it makes us happier 
then just physical object. You meet someone and you have an experience of communicating, touching, or maybe introducing to each other, or connected to each other. The experience is uh, greater than just meet someone who doesn't have anything to do with you. Or if the experience uh, we take from our connectivity, our what so called uh, touching with the object around us, although maybe just by the virtual reality, it seems that it's more valuable than just touching physical object uh, without experience. Studies also show companies that prioritize experiences of a product or features have a 200 greater likelihood of referral and 25% more customer loyalty. So that virtual reality right now has been uh, developed into uh, completing a lot of uh, consumers protect that uh, the trader or the businesses, the businessman can have a loyalty better and then also the likelihood that too much better. Then, so uh, what business you are in, if you can give experience to your customer, you may be the most important thing you do. For application marketers seeking to create, create immersive experience, this often means finding ways to enhance people's lives by blurring the lines between reality and the virtual world. Like uh, you can go to the um, Hollywood movies. The last one is uh, for Marvel, that's uh, Aquaman. That's what I like best, especially uh, I caught the time for watching that. Many time I will I was in the plane and then uh, this movie, I choose that because I like the full tour reality, the effect, everything inside the movie and that's awesome. Now, if we are talking about immersion, we're talking about virtual reality. I think everybody here has got the information about virtual reality, that about the immersive technology. And then mostly if we want to experience the immersion of virtual reality, that should be a headset. But some of the virtual reality has been produced by using no headset some of them, but mostly using a uh, headset, which can be uh, used to look 36 degree simulation. The user is placed in the digital environment and uh, we feel that he is actually there. There's also a console or tool that is like a cave. So the name is the cave or virtual reality education. So uh, there's also virtual reality immerses the user inside a digital simulation. They can interact with virtual reality also stimulate as many senses as possible is key to ensure the user feels like really are in the virtual environment. Google Expedition is a great example of mobile v 
VR in action, offering users the opportunity to explore imaginary world. So go to the next. Virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, and AI. If we're talking about artificial intelligence, or what's so called in Indonesia, keterdasan buatan something like that. If this artificial intelligence combined with VR or AR, it's a very great potential combination to educate the next generation of some complicated uh, careers, uh, complicated, uh, according to me as teacher, complicated uh, surgeons, uh, because the skill of surgeon is, uh, according to me, uh, complicated. Uh, pilots or even youngsters in school, like yeah, I just now. Then by using VR, AR, and AI, doctors already get countless hours of virtual surgery time. So they can encounter every complication before they hit the woods. There's a lot of training, and the training is risk free. AI can improve simulated training by incorporate more data points, comparing and contrasting different techniques and personalizing the education. The system will act more like a customizable trainer than a static simulator. So the AI and VR and AR can be a combination like a virtual teacher that can instruct you to do something, instruct us to do something based on the uh, what so-called scenario of the learning. It's like teacher. And to tell you the truth that because virtual reality can be managed, can be created, can be touched with AI that it make everything surrounding us while we are wearing the oscilloscope, while wearing the headset. We are like really in the situation that is made for us. In the virtual reality. And the combination of AI with VR or AR has the potential to democratize, democratize education and give every student a chance to learn because everything personal. By using virtual reality in 3D simulators, we can have collaboration um, training. Mr. Mambo, yeah. sorry. Yeah, uh, apakah suara saya terputus-putus? Uh, tidak, Pak. Uh, kita punya lima menit lagi. Okay. Tidak. Now for augmented reality, I think everybody here can have a practice. There are a lot of uh, augmented reality application inside the uh, Google Play Store. Even my my daughter, which is now who is now still three years, three and a half years, can apply, install and apply this kind of application. Let's also mix reality by combining the augmented reality and virtual reality. 
it can be mixed into a more realistic, immersive experience of doing something, maybe in collaboration, maybe in training, maybe in building something. And uh, I've mentioned the augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. I think uh, the uh, conclusion is here. And then I want to tell you about the use of AI here. The physical environment mapping, precise step perception, selective result warning, customized simulation and training and social media, which is truly, and then character modeling, conversational non-player characters, and rendering optimization. The eight uh, ways of AI that can make even more real the augmented reality. Then uh, I'll tell you a little about the, the last AI that which is used a lot of programmer in many fields that is the artificial neural network this performing the deep learning that uh, the program can learn by themselves it's like the work of a brain the brain uh, in the program uh, it's notes or something that can learn by themselves that is connected to each other into a web and then, then it's produced, produce something. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is one of the uh, AI. Yeah, I think this is the example of neural network that uh, the character can learn by uh, themselves. And then uh, talking about the uh, immersive technology and also teacher trainer, uh, teacher, and right now should be not only as teacher, but teacher trainer. Teacher trainer, uh, different from teacher because they are classroom expert, which uh, teach students regularly, but also have time, space, and reward to incubate and execute their own ideas, just like entrepreneur. Now, so they can affect the Project of the uh, policy in education from stakeholders. They can also train the friends. They can also produce a curriculum, have research, uh, etc. So, by mastering the way from implementing the VR and AR and also how to produce that uh, from maybe writing uh, the script for having the what so-called uh, virtual reality and also maybe using Maya and then also 3D Store Max or Unity 3D or maybe 3D Viewer or even PowerPoint. Yeah, PowerPoint right now has been completed with three D three dimensional object, so uh, we can have better teachers, not only teacher but also teacher friend. That's it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, my presentation. Maybe uh, this can be uh, something new that uh, the audience here can learn together. Of course, together with.
And uh, I show you, this is ATI. This is the Association of Digital Planner of Indonesia. And you can go to join for virtuality like this in this uh, presentation. I'll, I'll give it to uh, the committee so that everybody here can download the material. So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, oke, terima kasih Pak Mampu. Kak Azad, ternyata suaranya masih terputus-putus. Suara saya terputus-putus. Oh iya, oh, ya, maaf oh, iya. Kak. Ya, tidak kok Pak. Suara Pak Mampu jelas. Lancar. Aman. Ya, terima kasih Pak Mampu. Ya, you're welcome. Ya, terima kasih sudah bergabung. Selanjutnya, acara you're selanjutnya. Welcome adalah pemaparan materi dari Sevastopol State University dari Rusia. So, Mr. Petrakov. Hello. Can I start share my screen? Okay, yes, yes. Uh, uh, So, can I start my presentation? Okay, you can, please. Okay. Hello, everyone. Warm welcome from Sevastopol, from Sevastopol State University. State University. My name is Vasily Petrakov. I am the leader of project teams at Sevastopol State University, and today, Uh, my colleagues, Pavel and Fyodor, and I would like to share with you our experience in developing augmented and virtual reality applications. Can you translate, please? Okay. Okay, jadi beliau adalah Dr. Petra Kovacili dari Rusia. Beliau ingin share. Jadi beliau adalah leader dari project di Universitas Sevastopol dan beliau juga belajar di sana. Dan uh, hari ini beliau akan menjelaskan tentang pengalaman mengimplementasikan aplikasi AR atau VR. Um, you can continue, sir. So. First, I would like to tell you how we at our university motivate students, a huge number of young students, to participate in development and project activities. At the very beginning, we bring junior courses together. Then we tell them about technologies and their possibilities. Also show them the equipment available at the, our university. Then we give students preparation materials for the field they have chosen. We give lectures, videos, books, so that the student begin to hone his skills uh, in a chosen area. When a student shows excellent skills in his field, we invite him to competitions. Also give uh, him a real project for implementation. Can you translate, please? Okay. 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 Oke, okay, I'm sorry. Oke, okay, jadi translate-nya adalah uh, di Sevastopol University untuk mahasiswa muda sangat dimotivasi untuk mengikuti kegiatan project atau uh, research. Kemudian di awal pembelajaran, mereka menunjukkan tentang teknologi dan kemampuan teknologi itu sendiri kepada siswa-siswanya. Mereka juga memberikan video materi video, berupa video, buku, kelas, dan lain sebagainya, agar siswa dapat memotivasi diri untuk berkembang. Dan sangat intinya, sangat 
immerse atau ingin eh, sorry agar untuk berkembang lalu untuk siswa yang kemampuannya menonjol akan diikutkan kompetisi dan mengikuti research. Oke, okay, you can you may continue. Today we will share our experience in developing three augmented uh, and virtual reality projects. The first project uh, used augmented reality to preserve the culture heritage of our city, Sevastopol. We decided to digitalize the internal and external exposition of Malakhov Organ. It's a memorial complex which is located in our city. Can you tra translate, please? Okay, Project pertama menggunakan AR itu untuk menjaga budaya kota yang ada di Sevastopol. Kemudian di kota ini ada memorial bernama Malakov Kurgan dan mereka akan membuat eksterior internal interior dan eksterior tersebut menjadi digital. Oke. Okay. Go ahead. Um, the main idea of uh, our application is very simple. Uh, we take objects uh, of historical heritage, such as monuments, rare documents, archive photos and videos, and uh, digitalize them using software to make a digital copy, such as 3D models, digital snapshots, audio guides. This uh, digital copy can then uh, be used in application to solve several problems. First of all, it would be a mobile application of the history of our city. Uh, also, it's about preservation of historical heritage and decreasing interest uh, in history among young people in our city. Also, finally, it's uh, about access to information for people with limited mobility. Can you translate, please? Okay, jadi ide utama membuat AR ini adalah awalnya sangat sederhana, yaitu untuk mengubah warisan budaya ke digital menggunakan software dan membuat digital kopinya. Digital kopinya itu dapat digunakan dan diaplikasi untuk menyelesaikan masalah. Okay. You can continue, kan? So, to implement such an idea, developers, 2D designers, 3D designers, as well as historians were needed. Uh, while working on the application, we held weekly meetings to discuss progress, problems, and how to solve them. To organize tasks on the project, we used Trello service. Also, each developer used a common tool uh, to save uh, their work. It was a Git as a service of saving versions of the project and source tree for interacting with the Git. And also the Bitbucket service in order to uh, save our project uh, at this server. Can you translate, please? Okay, jadi uh, sebelumnya adalah tim mereka untuk membuat AR ini. Dan untuk membuat AR ini mereka memilih atau mengadakan meeting mingguan. Dan di sini ada Git, ada Source Tree, ada Bitbucket, dan ada Trello. Ini adalah alat atau aplikasi atau software yang digunakan untuk membuat AR. Uh, akan saya jelaskan. So, our 3D designer created models using two methods. First of all, photogrammetry, and also using the Stonex X300 scanner. For photogrammetry, he took many photographs from different angels and uploaded these photographs to the software, Photoscan. Uh, in this software, he proceeded uh, uh, point clouds from a set of photographs and uh, uh, cleaned them uh, in order to obtain a final model. The second method was to scan object uh, using equipment that provided by our university. And in the result, uh, we optimized that model that scan using uh, Stonex Reconstruct software. Can you translate, please? Okay. Jadi, untuk um, desainer tiga dimensi ini, beliau membuat model menggunakan dua metode, fotogrametri dan menggunakan pemindai atau scanner stone X300. Untuk fotogrametrinya, beliau mengambil banyak foto dari berbagai sudut dan mengunggah foto-foto tersebut ke perangkat lunak seperti botok scan. Dan dalam software ini, beliau juga memproses 
point cloud dari sekumpulan foto dan membersihkannya atau menghapuskannya lalu untuk mendapatkan model yang terakhir. Dan metode yang kedua itu tadi adalah memindai objek menggunakan peralatan yang disediakan oleh universitas beliau. Jadi model pemindaiannya atau scan-nya itu dihasilkan juga perlu diproses menggunakan perangkat lunak seperti stone reconstructor. Oke, okay, you can make continue. So on this slide you can see part of the collection of models made by our designer. Uh, when it comes for 2D designer to develop the uh, user interface, our designer first used the use case diagram, which indicates all the possibilities of the application. After that, uh, the designer put together the user interface in Adobe Illustrator. It should be noted that the algorithm for generating different color themes for the application written at C Sharp programming language also came handy. Uh, Thanks for this algorithm, we have chosen the most beautiful color them for the application. Can you translate, please? Oke, okay, jadi untuk oke okay, untuk membuka atau membuat atau menyediakan user interface itu menggunakan case diagram dan dirangkai dari Adobe Illustrator dengan warna algoritmenya tertulis C hashtag. Oke. Okay. So, as for audio designer, he handle audio guides in Audacity and also perform noise removal as well as audio compression. Uh, about developers, the developer used uh, several tools at once. Uh, firstly, uh, the Unity CD engine was used uh, to develop an application for Android and iOS. C Sharp programming language was used as the main programming language. Also to implement augmented reality, we used the MaxST plugin, which allows us to dynamically generate image markers. And for a simplified build of the application, we used the Unity Cloud build. Uh, to reduce the weight of the application, we develop an algorithm for dynamic loading models using asset bundles. Can you translate, please? Oke, okay, jadi untuk pengembangannya menggunakan beberapa alat secara sekaligus. Dan yang pertama ini adalah Adam Sin Unity, yang digunakan untuk mengembangkan aplikasi untuk Android dan iOS. Sedangkan yang selanjutnya adalah bahasa pemrograman C++. Jadi digunakan sebagai bahasa pemrograman yang utama. Terus selanjutnya adalah untuk mengimplementasikan augmented reality atau AIP tadi, beliau menggunakan plugin MaxST yang um, memungkinkan beliau untuk membuat penanda gambar secara dinamis. Dan untuk membangun aplikasi atau membuat aplikasi, itu disederhanakan terlebih dahulu, sehingga, oh maaf, dan mereka menggunakan Unity Cloud Build untuk pengembangannya. Sedangkan untuk mengurangi bobot aplikasi, beliau mengembangkan algoritma untuk pemuatan model atau uh, oh ya yeah, maaf pemuatan model secara dinamis menggunakan aset bundle. Oke, okay, you can make continue. Oke, okay. uh, as for augmented reality realization in the application, we decided to use information segments near the exhibits as markers for augmented reality as for image markers by recognizing the plates the user could see much more information uh, he could see archival photos digital 3d models as well as content that is not open to the public uh, to implement dynamic generation of markers we uh, first download markers images uh, save them at the local storage of the device and uh, train recognition with maxst Uh, at the end, we use SLAM algorithm to place the content on the marker. Can you translate, please? Oke, okay. jadi untuk aplikasi ini, mereka, karena mereka menggunakan tanda-tanda di exhibitnya atau di museumnya atau di lokasi itu sendiri untuk AR, dengan menyadari atau recognizing tanda tersebut, user dapat me mendapatkan banyak informasi dan dapat mengarsip atau mendata foto digital models dan konten yang lain dan untuk mengimplementasi implement, maaf mengaplikasikan cara di, dinamik tanda-tanda ini pertama mereka meng, uh, men, 
download dan men-save ter- foto tersebut dan di data di MAXST dan di akhirnya menggunakan slam maaf menggunakan algoritma slam untuk me- mendatanya. So, in the future, we plan to connect other museums as well as use the Immersal plugin to implement tracking of large locations, supplementing them with digital content. Thank you for listening. The next speaker will be Pavel. He will talk about uh, uh, the experience of his team in developing an application using virtual reality. Can you translate, please? Okay, jadi... Okay, jadi... Oke, okay, okay, jadi ke depannya mereka juga akan mengembangkan aplikasi ini lagi atau riset ini lagi untuk tujuan yang tertentu dan selanjutnya ada Mr. Paul untuk menjelaskan materinya. Hello everyone. Can you, okay, can you hear me? Can you, I'm sorry, but Just your phone. mic is a bit lower, so you need to... You should uh, use your microphone. Okay, okay. Yes. Can I start? Try to speak. Okay. Okay. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to see you all. My name is Paul. I am a leader of a project called Peoples of Arctic VR. Today, I'm going to tell you about uh, my experience of virtual reality project development. Let's get started. Could you translate it, please? Okay, thank you. Jadi, beliau sudah memperkenalkan diri tadi. Uh, beliau adalah dan nama beliau adalah Paul. Okay, you may continue. Okay. Uh, first of all, in 2018, okay, uh, uh, beliau adalah pengalaman pengalaman timnya, pengalaman timnya dalam pengembangan nama Paul. Okay, you. Excuse me, I have to Hello. In 2019, our team is looking for a case to develop our application. And we found it. Uh, our task was to develop a museum exhibition to using virtual reality to present a tomb of Hunter's Folk. Uh, tomb, uh, Hunter's Folk is an indigenous folk, folk from the north. Tomb is a traditional housing of this folk. So we began to communicate with customers, uh, also, we began to study a culture and traditions of um, indigenous peoples of the north, and that was very cool. We really love this wonderful land. Could you translate it, please? Okay, thank you. Jadi di akhir tahun 2019. Okay, so, jadi, jadi di akhir 2019, tim dari Mr. Paul ini mencari case atau kasus untuk VR, aplikasi VR. Dan akhirnya mereka menemukannya aja. Yaitu proyeknya adalah untuk mengembangkan museum exhibition secara menjadi virtual reality untuk the charm of county folk atau uh, suku kanti. Suku kanti ini adalah uh, orang indigenous from dari utara dan cam ini adalah rumah tradisional dari suku kanti ini sendiri lalu mereka memulai komunikasi dengan staff museum dan mulai belajar budayanya untuk membuat VR reality ini oke okay. you can continue kan oke okay. Uh, then, in the process of communication, we had an idea. Uh, we, uh, want, we wanted to uh, create not one small exhibition. We wanted to design an entire platform using virtual reality. 
uh, this platform would be uh, as, as would be a storage to keep uh, many similar uh, many similar exhibitions. It would be not a game but an educational resource. Uh, it would be a tool to present a knowledge about uh, culture and traditions of all indigenous peoples from the north. Uh, everyone liked our idea and we got to work. Could you translate it, please? Jadi setelah proses komunikasi, uh, mereka mengeluarkan idea kalau tidak hanya sebagian kecil yang akan didigitalkan, tapi mereka membuat semua Mem mendesain seluruh platform menggunakan virtual reality ini. Nanti uh, di VR ini uh, ini adalah berupa nanti akan berupa sumber edukasi dan bukan game. Okay. Dan akan menjaga tradisi dan budaya indigenous people ini sendiri atau orang indigenous. Oke. Okay. Uh, let's, let's meet our friendly team to create our projects uh, more efficiently. We needed to we needed uh, 3D designers, 2D designers, developers, mentor. Uh, there was also a manager who controlled uh, the task, uh, the team sections, and distributed the tasks. It was actually me. Uh, and of course, this is not a whole team. Can you translate it, please? Okay, before I translate, uh, your mic is a, a bit lower, so if you could make your mic volume a bit higher, that would be awesome. So, the, jadi, translate-nya tadi adalah, ini adalah tim dari, untuk membuat project tadi, ada ada, ada 3D designer, ada, 2D, uh, ada 2D designer, ada pengembang, uh, lalu ada juga manajernya yang mendistribusikan atau membagikan assessment dan ini bukan seluruh timnya. Oke, okay. you can continue. Oke, okay, can you hear me now? Okay, it's, it's, mm -hmm. can you say again? Can you okay. talk again? Um, so, so what is Okay, uh, to create our project more efficiently and quickly, we decided to use a Scrum methodology. Every week, we created a small part of our project. To implement this method, we decided to use a special project management, management service called Trello. Uh, so as a manager, I could see what, uh, what and how uh, our team is working now. Um, And also, our developers uh, used a special version control system called Git to control the current version of our project with the code. Uh, could you tr translate it, please? Oke. Okay. Jadi untuk pekerjaan ini, mereka ingin pekerjaan yang ingin efisien dan cepat, mereka menggunakan metodologi Scrum, yaitu mereka membuat bagian dari project ini se setiap minggu dan metode ini dan mereka menggunakan Trello service Trello dan sebagai manajer mereka dapat memantau memantau pekerjaan ini dengan Trello tersebut dan mereka juga menggunakan Git kan Okay. Uh, so, what is Social Truth? Social Truth is a special store to keep all, all information about our project. Uh, in the process, we requested the necessary information from customers and from North, and then collected it in our Social Truth. Then, if we needed it again, we came to our Social Truth and studied. For multi user access and convenience, we used uh, Google Drive surveys. Also, we use Google Docs uh, for documents, for example, for scenario. Could you translate it, please? Okay. Jadi, untuk menjaga atau mengumpulkan seluruh informasinya, mereka menggunakan Search of Truth. Jadi, ini... Mereka menggunakan... 
mengumpulkan designer tools. Uh, how works for the designers? First of all, they selected a special new object to model. Then they announced all of it. All kept information uh, into the truth about it. Uh, after, after, as soon as they understood uh, what they had to do, uh, they started 3D model creation and uh, texturing process was going on. Finally, completed model was uh, passed to the developers. Uh, most of our models was created by hand with the special program called Blender 3D. But uh, one couple of our models was created using photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is a special process when uh, a real object is recreated by, by using a special program with a lot of copies of this object. In our case, that was a photo scan program. Could you translate it, please? I guess I'm sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Two D designer tools. Um, first of all, two D designers uh, do so. Those called uh, sketches on the paper. Uh, sketches uh, sketches is uh, uh, displayed an approximate view uh, of different menus and user interface. Uh, then uh, user interface uh, was drawn in a special program. In our case, Adobe Illustrator. And after that, um, where when uh, the layouts were ready, they were they were sent to the developers. Uh, could you translate it, please? Okay, okay, jadi untuk membuat sketsanya, mereka membuat sketch di, maaf, di kertas dulu, lalu di dimasukkan atau dibuat di Adobe Illustrator atau di Photoshop. Ketika layoutnya sudah ready, mereka mengirimkan itu ke developer suatu pengembang. Okay. Uh, developer tools. The main area of programmer's responsibility was a programming. No way. Um, uh, for the programming, they used a special game engine called Unreal Engine 4. Programming... Um, uh, Graphical programming system Blueprints and Steamware plugin. Uh, Blueprints used to create a basic uh, game loop, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, player control system, and one part of another systems. But a basic program architecture of our platform was created with a C++ programming language. Also, developers added the models into the engine, worked with the sounds, user interface, effects, graphics, and so on. Um, and then developers were engaged were engaged in testing to check how and what works in virtual reality. Uh, Sevastopol State University provides its uh, provided its own equipment uh, for testing. Uh, there was a uh, HTC Vive uh, virtual reality system and a computer. Could you translate it, please? Yeah. Okay. Jadi. Sebagai pengembang atau developer, tugas utamanya adalah programming. Jadi mereka menggunakan game engine UE4 dan Blueprints Graphic Programming dan Steam VR Plugin. Blueprints-nya ini adalah gambaran dasar dari project ini. Lalu mereka menggunakan C++ sebagai program bahasanya dan mereka menggunakan 3D model untuk mendesain dan me mencoba project ini. Lalu mereka juga oh, developer satu pengembang juga sangat aktif untuk me mengecek atau mengetes program ini. Can continue guys. Oke. Okay. Uh, what about our future plans? Uh, 
we haven't stopped to realize, uh, realize this platform. We continue to realize it. Uh, every day we try to make our platform a little better. We want to want to recruiting new project teams. We want to participate more competitions and get and take new heights. And of course, we want to we want to and we want to expand our platform to pr present more folks of the north and to Russia. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You're a wonderful audience. I want to call on the next speaker, Blank Fyodor. Could you translate it, please? Yes, thank you. Jadi, uh, mereka tidak akan berhenti untuk mengembangkan ini. Jadi, uh, untuk mengembangkan aplikasi ini atau VR ini, mereka juga akan berpartisipasi di kompetisi, banyak kompetisi. Dan, oke, okay, untuk selanjutnya ada... Pembicara selanjutnya ada Mr. Blank Fedor. Hello everyone. Mr. Fedor, can you? My name is Fedor. I am leader Hello. of Project Hersnes VR, and today I'd like to talk about uh, our experience in developing VR application. Can you translate? Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Jadi ini adalah Dr. Fedor dan akan beliau adalah leader dari project. Sersonesis VR. Okay. Okay, you can. Okay. Idea of our application. Idea of our application is to present uh, Sevastopol historical heritage uh, using virtual reality. We have developed a platform uh, which uh, shows horror Sersonesis in a different time periods in virtual reality. Can you translate? <laughs> okay. Jadi aplikasi idea dari aplikasi ini adalah untuk mengembangkan histori dari atau budaya histori dari Sevastopol menggunakan VR dan yaitu Kora Se A ah, namanya nama budayanya adalah Kora Se Ser Sonesus yang akan dikembangkan dari waktu sejarahnya. Oke, okay. kami ini. Uh, when the idea was born, we put together a team. For implementing this, uh, we need a team of developers, uh, through the artists, to the designers, and uh, historical support. Uh, can you translate? Okay, this is the team that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Ini adalah tim yang akan berada di projectnya atau yang berada, yang mengerjakan projectnya. Okay. For effective project management, we are using something like Scrum methodology. For track its uh, task, we are using the Trello board. Uh, for developing, uh, we are using the uh, Git version control system. And uh, for uh, our project, we are using uh, GitLab as a remote repository. Can you translate? Okay, jadi untuk memudahkan projectnya. Mereka menggunakan metodologi Scrum seperti yang tadi, lalu untuk men-track men men datanya atau pekerjaannya mereka menggunakan Trello Board dan untuk mengembangkannya mereka menggunakan Git Version Control System. Dan mereka juga menggunakan GitLab sebagai face posisi remote. Okay. Uh, our application must be historically reliable. So at the beginning of development, we started by analyzing historical sources. During the existence of the project, we even managed to participate in real archaeological excavation of the crypt, which were later placed as an additional location in our project. Can you translate? Okay, jadi... Oke, okay. karena aplikasi ini harus sangat historikal atau sangat bersejarah, mereka memulai dengan menganalisis sejarah itu sendiri. Oke, okay. you can go ahead. Uh, we are using several methods to develop 3D models. First method is modeling from scratch. We draw plans, concept art, uh, and sketches. And then based on them in Blender modeling package, we develop a model. 
for texturing, uh, we use uh, uh, Blender tools and additional software, Substance Painter. The second method is to obtain uh, models using scanners. At the university, we have access to such equipment as uh, the InScanners E3D scanner and the Stonex uh, uh, X300 uh, laser scanner. The models obtained from scanners need to be optimized due to the huge number of polygons, uh, as well as clean it of an accessory object. Uh, the third method we are using is a uh, photogrammetry. Uh, that is technology of, bio, uh, of building of model based on images. For this, we are using special software, Agisoft Metashape Professional. Models obtained by this method are also subject to optimization. Can you translate, please? Jadi, jadi tim mereka menggunakan dev, uh, menggunakan pengembang 3D model. Jadi mereka membuat sketsa dulu, lalu sketsanya di blend menjadi model packaging di software. Lalu mereka baru mengembangkan model itu sendiri. Uh, mereka menggunakan uh, metode kedua itu mereka menggunakan scanner. Jadi mereka menggunakan scanner untuk untuk Mem memperoleh datanya dan mereka menggunakan scanner A scan SA 3D dan Stone X 300. Lalu mereka juga untuk mengoptimasi datanya mereka mereka ah, merek, lalu meng untuk mengoptimasi datanya mereka menggunakan metode ketiga yaitu fotogrametri yaitu mereka me memfoto bagian yang akan dijadikan VR, lalu mereka mendata atau memprogram foto-foto tersebut. Oke, okay. you can go again. Uh, we are using Relusion Shark Creator and Relusion iClone software for uh, character design. Uh, okay. uh, on the slide, okay, you can see examples. Menggunakan Relusion. Uh, on the slide, you can see examples of using uh, the model's object, model objects. Okay. Uh, can jadi, you translate, please? Okay. Jadi ini adalah contoh dari. <laughs> Oke, okay, jadi ini adalah contoh dari objek modelnya dan mereka menggunakan Relusion Character Creator dan Relusion Icon Software. Oke, okay. can go again. Uh, the development of the interface began with driving on paper. Uh, our today designers, uh, taking into account modern UX trends, uh, drafts uh, a sketch on paper, then uh, uh, assembles a prototype in a Figma software. We are using Adobe Photoshop and uh, Adobe Illustrator for uh, draft elements. Can you translate, please? Okay, so to mengembangkan program ini mereka memulai dengan sketsa atau menggambar di kertas lalu mereka menggunakan lalu mereka akan membuat ini menggunakan menggunakan Adobe Photoshop atau Adobe Illustration Illustrator. Oke, okay, you can go again. Uh, we build the application itself in the Unity game engine for our survive. We are using Microsoft Visual Studio for to write the code, and uh, we are using uh, special SimVR and uh, Virtual Reality Toolkit assets to interact with VR. These models allow us to use standard uh, mechanics uh, without complication, complications, such as teleport, grab, interacting with the interface, uh, etc. The university provides us with uh, access to virtual reality helmets. Can you translate, please? Okay. Jadi untuk mengembangkan atau membuat aplikasi tersebut, mereka menggunakan uh, menggunakan Unity Game untuk HTC5. Uh, mereka juga menggunakan Microsoft Visual Studio untuk meng, mem, membuat kode. Mereka menggunakan Steam VR dan VR TK uh, untuk Berinteraksi, berinter, berinteraksi dengan VR 
da, ini memudahkan mereka untuk mengembangkan aplikasi tersebut. You can continue, kan? Uh, work with, um, with sound is very important uh, part of development of virtual world. Uh, with the help of Audacity Audio tracks, where proceed. For example, cleaning uh, from noise, improving sound, uh, and uh, so on. Uh, for integration, we are using the Vice Sound Engine. Can you translate, please? Okay, jadi, okay. jadi untuk mengatur aplikasi suara di aplikasinya, mereka menggunakan Audacity yang ada fitur meng menghapus noise dan memproses audio tracks. Oke. Okay. Uh, at the moment, after creating a prototype, we are moving towards improving the graphics uh, of our VR application. We also started uh, de um, developing a model with uh, augmented reality to a mobile phone. With the help of a mobile phone, we will be able to see ancient manner just over the surface of ruin. For augmented reality, we are using uh, technologies such as AirCore, AirKit, uh, and Immersal. Can you translate, please? Okay. So, jadi saat okay. ini setelah <laughs> ya, jadi saat ini setelah membuat prototype, uh, beliau bergerak ke arah peningkatan grafis aplikasi VR. Gitu. Dan setelah itu be, e, mereka juga memulai mengembangkan modul dengan augmented reality atau AR ke aplikasi seluler. Jadi dengan bantuan ponsel, e, mereka dapat melihat se, sejenis rumah kuno atau e, permukaan reruntuhan seperti itu. Jadi untuk augmented reality atau AR tadi, mereka menggunakan teknologi seperti AR, AR Core dan AR Kit dan Immersal. Immersal. Nah. You can continue. So uh, we uh, have uh, augmented reality and virtual reality teams in education and industry fields. And Sevastopol State University is ready for conversation and open for consider it. Thank you all for listening. We will happy to answer your questions in future. Okay, jadi tadi adalah presentasi dari perwakilan dari Sevastopol State University tentang research mereka di AR VR. Okay. For the next one, we have Dr. Tan from City University of Hong Kong. Dr. Tan, are you here with us? Yeah, hello, hi everyone. So, um, let me share the screen uh, for the for the talk. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Let's try. Can you uh, give me a minute? I share the screen. Uh, okay. 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 So, hi everyone. Good afternoon. So, uh, you can hear me, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. So let, let me begin. Yeah. Um. Um. So for the next uh, uh fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, uh, let me share with you um the exciting things about AR, VR, like what our previous speakers have spoken. Uh, they are very exciting. Uh, actually, they have been um, developed over the last 10 years or so because of smartphone technology. So the, the really cool thing is that we have smartphones, smart tablets, and so that enables uh, um, so-called augmented reality and virtual reality. And now, together with AI, I think there are a lot of very fantastic applications. Uh, so in this uh, very animated uh, slides, right? <laughs> Uh, so we might not have uh, uh, maybe time for uh, translation because I think uh, it's very graphic intensity. So enjoy the <laughs> animation. So let me show you uh, some of these uh, VR and AR first. So what are they? So it's like, uh, well, with this smartphone, um, mobile tablets technology, you will be using the sensors like uh, the GPS, um, the sensors like touch screen, um, like, um, you know, accelerometer, uh, of those smartphones that together enable us to gather more information, right, for the users of that um, 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 technology. Uh, so, for example, if you go shopping, you could uh, use that um, to 
have an idea, you know, what are shops nearby and what kind of discounts and uh, what kind of reviews that they have, right, based on um, this superimposed information. Um, and also at home right now, uh, we probably can also have, uh, you know, more interact more interaction, right, with um, the things around us. Okay? For example, this is a, um, a breakfast on the table. Um, and this kid, uh, maybe, you know, uh, who is listless, you know, the, the kid that doesn't like to eat breakfast. Maybe we can use this kind of VR, AR, right, um, to sort of um, um, engage these kids um, to, to, eat, to eat the breakfast, right? For example, if they scan the QR code on this uh, breakfast uh, box, you can get more information about the nutrition, right? And at the same time, it, uh, you can also uh, engage the kids uh, with uh, eating breakfast. Now, the technology behind all this uh, AR and VR really relies on how powerful that hardware is because you will have to go through a few stages, right? For example, scanning the uh, surroundings, okay, surrounding scanning, and then this uh, technolo technology have a database of um, um, images that it has, you know, it could be multimedia, not just images, it could be uh, videos and audios, and it does comparison. And then after that, it would do this uh, positioning, right? For example, oh, where should I place my superimposed uh, data image on top of this uh, real world contents? And then if the last stage is to render, that means to uh, make it come alive, okay? For example, this uh, phone, it needs to take, um, uh, you know, quickly do this uh, object recognition, knowing, oh, there's a human, human at the top, and then this is the branded uh, box, and then it recognize, and after that, you know, um, it will then search its database and realize that, oh, if I'm going to um, superimpose something, I would not want to hide this object, you know, I want to find where is the empty space for me to post my uh, superimpose uh, my um, uh, object, okay, the augmented uh, reality object, like this beam that you see, right? Then you place it right uh, in the middle uh, and then you render it, okay? So roughly speaking, again, uh, it depends, uh, you know, um, on the on the device, how powerful it is, but roughly speaking, uh, we will be performing this task 30 times a second, right? So that is how, how powerful um, the cameras that we have nowadays, okay? Um, the resolution is very high enough to um, do a lot of all this uh, um, application, okay? But not only does the, um, you know, the mobile tablets, you know, uh, count on this hardware, it also counts on uh, the software uh, connection with the internet, connection with the cloud and so on, okay? So it is a very complicated process, uh, but, as our operating systems on this uh, phone get more and more powerful, we are able to do many of these tasks right simultaneously uh, uh, many more times. Okay, so uh, I think there are many interesting applications. Just now you saw it was a media advertising uh, on the use of AR and VR, and also uh, gaming and play. They are very uh, intensively used. Uh, very little uh, application right, is still used in ins instructional. Later, I will show you some, as well as for social networking. Instructional will be very useful. Uh, for example, if uh, I want to know how to um, operate a mach washing machine or how I should um, visualize you know, um, things that I see from my surrounding. For example, uh, if I say, look at this magazine article, uh, it's an advertisement, but uh, that's a very nice model, right? Who is uh, um, wearing a, a particular fashion. And uh, this fashion comes with different colors. But in this uh, real world printed on paper, it is only just one type. So it is very hard to visualize, right? Um, what if this model is wearing other colors, right? For example, uh, the pink or the classic. So what uh, you, you, you might have this AR VR in which then, you know, you put your phone over and you could then even select the different colors, right? To go with the <laughs> models. And you can also um, look at the back, right? To see how it looks like. So that becomes a live animated, right? Um, in other words, you have real world plus a smart software in, on the mobile tablets that allows you to have better interaction, have better understanding, have better um, 
appreciation of uh, you know, things around us, okay? And also to make better decisions, right? Maybe I want to buy this gene after I have um, gone through this process. And back to what I just mentioned, uh, so suppose you just purchase a new washing machine. Uh, maybe it was uh, you know, from another country, right? Maybe, uh, for example, um, um, I, 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 I bought it somewhere and, and uh, I bought it as a present for my, say, my mother who couldn't uh, read English, right? Or who couldn't read the, the, the languages that is on the machine and who could not read the manual. So then maybe the software is smart enough to guide the user, right? Step by step uh, to use all this machine, okay? In a safe manner. For example, um, by holding, say, this tablet or the phone over, uh, the software could highlight which are the buttons that uh, guide the users to go uh, in sequence, right? For example, oh, rinse. And then after that, uh, you know, um, make sure that the, the user would follow and, and perform that, right? For example, then you see then the user would do that um, process. And after that is done, the user would then again use VR and AR and, super, and su get this superimposed uh, uh, image. And the software would then guide this uh, user forward to the next stage. So that's the use of uh, instructional uh, VR and AR. And at the same time, instructional could mean um, transmission of knowledge. Okay? For example, um, just now it was about reading a manual, right? So you make that come alive. And say, if you want knowledge from the books, okay, um, no longer do you just read the books. So you want to uh, have more interaction, more diverse. For example, uh, especially for high school, middle school students, uh, it would be very good to engage them. For example, uh, if like a chemistry book, uh, if you see this uh, two hydrogen and one oxygen, that's water, right? H2O. And you want to have better um, idea of this chemistry bond. I think you could sort of uh, use uh, AR and VR to visualize them, allows the user to play with them, for example, right? Um, you see H2O, right? And say, suppose if uh, you remove one hydrogen uh, um, atom away, then there will be hydrogen oxide, okay, for example, HO. Okay. So it allows a lot of uh, creativity in the process, I mean, with AR and VR instruction. So these are very nice things that, um, for example, if you see that uh, this is where you could uh, play with the um, superimposed VR and AR images. And at the same time, instructional could mean, for example, to guide uh, a driver. For example, the driver is in a foreign land, foreign country, like Japan, right? Uh, we do not <laughs> have any um, knowledge of Japanese or you know the kanji, and then maybe the software is smart enough to guide the, the tourist, right, the driver uh, along the along the route safely. For example, you know uh, the the driver, maybe not the driver, but the person who right, is sitting beside could use this uh, tablet, right, superimposed over the real world, so that you could translate in real time. Okay, um, for example. Uh, Again, the tourists in Japan, they may want to find a safe restaurant. You know, for example, a restaurant that caters for the diets, like a vegetarian diet. They could also use the same technologies, VR and AR, to then do this translation, get reviews, and know, hey, you know, uh, whether certain payments options are available or not. For example, in uh, New York City, um, the, the tourists can see, oh, um, this... For example, this cap move, move very fast, right? But then um, the software is fast enough, right? To capture that, hey, um, you can pay by credit cards uh, in the public caps and so on, okay? So in other words, VR and AR applications do enrich uh, human interaction with the real world and has many functionality like instructional, like advertisements, like marketing, like uh, uh, gaming and so on, many more, okay? So I think, uh, um, 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 let me show you a few more, okay, uh, very exciting ones. For example, designing, right, arts and designing. Uh, say, suppose you have purchased a new apartment and you want to decorate the place. So maybe the property agent may have uh, a special software, right, using AR and VR allows the buyer to see, hey, maybe uh, the buyer, right, is a family with uh, this number of kids and maybe, you know, they can have those photos, Um that allows the user to test uh, virtually first. So it, it's not in real life first, okay? So it's like test virtually. And the user could then say, hey, maybe I shall put the family photo there. And um, you know, it could actually delete and, and, and choose others. 
And then once they have made up their mind, then the real world takes place, right? <laughs> what happened takes place in the real world, okay? Like what you see, okay? So it could really save a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, time and energy, right? Using software and AR and VR to make better decisions, okay? And of course, networking, uh, that's also part of what, um, uh, social networking, that's part of what um, um, drives human. For example, Facebooks and um, Twitters and so on, online social networks, okay? And WhatsApp and so on. So uh, same thing, right? If we are able to combine social networking with AR and VR, that would be very powerful. For example, say, suppose you, you go to a party and uh, you know not many people, but uh, you would like to make friends, right? So then uh, you could actually use that technologies, right? <laughs> to try to gather intelligence, right? To know, hey, you know, who is this uh, person? And the software could do some data mining, right? To um, dig out uh, some, some data intelligence for the user, right? To um, have better ways to um, make friends with the other people, right? That they see for the first time, okay? Um, so these are some of this uh, animation, okay? And of course, uh, earlier on we, we mentioned, right? Say so suppose uh, you have, um, gone to a place for shopping, you like to know which are the better shops, not just good friends, right? But uh, shops that you want to know where to go to. Uh, turns out that many shops nowadays know that um, uh, people are using AR and VR. So what they do is that they have, for example, you see that uh, right at the storefront, they may have QR codes, right? So they are the, the so-called two, the 2D, two two-dimension codes that allows the user to scan, all right? In order to activate the software. So uh, these are some of the things that shop, shop, shops are, you know, they are, they are doing now. And actually, uh, uh, not only do they give more information to the shoppers, I think they also provide um, more opportunities. For example, uh, say suppose the, 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 sh the shopper, you know, um, brings out his AR and VR software again, and the software is smart enough to say that, hey, uh, the friend that you just met uh, at the last party, Carmen, oh, she likes this kind of fashion, this dress. And turns out that this dress is now at a discount from this shop. So it can provide you that information, right? And so allows the, um, the user right, to make um, very timely uh, um, decision, okay? For example, um, connecting new friends with what they like, you know, and also the decisions you make. And, um, and you see that then the software can work with the shops to push out a special discount kind of um, uh, payments, right? So that encourages the, the user to really go and purchase that dress, okay? So that really cl closes the loop between what is in the real world and what's the end user, the human wants to do as well, okay? Uh, say suppose, well, that person uh, finally uh, got, get into a date with Carmen, right? <laughs> then they, um, they get into a, a dining restaurants and the same software could then come in again, right? Uh, and be very handy, okay? Um, and I think um, in the last few slides, I, I just want to very briefly mention that um, the software really relies on signals, okay, coming from the outside world. So there are many kinds of signal, for example, the real images the, uh, or the videos. And to make use of all these, you need object recognition that you, you will see, right? That's why we have AI and so on, as well as the database of objects that you can compare with. Another kind of signal is, I think you will know this QR code, right? Quick response code, it's like, it's like the barcode, the duty code. Uh, has a short history, 1994, invented by Toyota engineers. Uh, but I think it is very, very interesting uh, with this technology that we are using it. We are seeing more and more uh, use of it, okay? Um, I think uh, th this is uh, the QR codes and this technology are really uh, uh, what drives you know, uh, popularity of AR and VR applications as well, okay? Uh, maybe let me close off by just one last application. Uh, again, this is using uh, a AR and VR together with QR code, okay? And I think uh, we have some of these applications. I think uh, it, hopefully this application can uh, lead you to think of more. For example, say a group of friends they gather together, right? And uh, they are going to send this group picture to another good friend, right? Further away in another country, okay? And so what happened is that they generate a QR code on their smartphone, okay? So that's what all these red dots that you see, okay? Then 
the photographer who's using the camera and it's from this smartphone, right? Um, it's going to use this smart software that can read the QR code and then instantly render the QR code, superimpose, uh, say, um, um, happy birthday wishes, right? On top of that, and that becomes the real image that gets sent to the to the uh, the, the distant friend, okay, who received that image. Okay, so this is a very simple application of uh, um, AR, you know, uh, application with QR code. Okay, um, I think um, I let me let me let me stop here. Okay, uh, on the use of AR and QR code. Yeah, do you have any questions? Okay, okay, Dr. Tan. So we have the we have Husaini MPD. So as that, uh, what is the function this application for education, for learning? Ah, for learning. Um, just just now we have um seen right. Uh, if you recall, uh, this uh, uh, for example, textbook. Uh, you can make textbook come alive. For example, you saw the chemistry. Um. Uh, textbook in which you can play with the atomic bombs, uh, not atomic bomb, <laughs> making new molecules, right? From the atoms, okay? Uh, and I think that uh, you, there is one way to make uh, experiments, right? So experiments, right? No longer have to be in a laboratory. It can happen in the AR, VR environment. Yeah. Okay. Saya akan mentransmitar jadi Ini bisa memudahkan proses belajar mengajar karena tidak harus di laboratorium bisa menggunakan AR VR ini jadi mempraktekannya hanya bisa diprogramkan seperti itu. So can we ask you another question or do yeah, you sure. have? No, no problem. I have time. No okay. Worry. Okay. So we have another question for you. As a teacher, we make our own AR software or. Yes, AR software user that we can apply to. What is AR software user that we can apply to our student as a reference that have lightweight software that can be used in the learning process, especially chemistry. It's from Lydia Panca Ningtia. If it's software to a uh, free software to build AR. Yeah, so uh, the best software that we can apply in learning chemistry, especially chemistry. <laughs> uh, I see. Uh, uh, chemistry, uh, yeah, that, I think, I think uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I think that is tricky because chemistry, I think, uh, is a more high, high school level subject. Uh, and so that is harder to find maybe, yeah. Um, but I think uh, I saw on the chat, right, for learning English and learning languages, for example, uh, it may be easier to find this kind of free software. You know, there are many more such kind of software out there. For example, uh, just now you saw, right, to translate between Japanese and English, uh, or, you know, different languages, Indonesia and English and so on. Uh, so, so I think that those kind of software could really make an impact in classroom teaching. Yeah. Mm. I think another way, another kind of subjects that, uh, that it may be useful, AR and VR, would be uh, STEM subjects, uh, not just chemistry, but mathematics. For example, when we uh, learn geometry, for example, primary school, middle school, right? Um, we may be using um, like um, a ruler and compass, right, to, to construct ge geometry objects. So I think, um, you know, sometimes uh, the VR and AR can. Say suppose we ask the, 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 the user to do the construction partially on the paper. And then after that, there's a software that goes on top of it, right? The software scan the thing and then makes makes something come alive. So that can inspire the student, uh, you know, that can provide more information to the student. So in other words, I think what maybe is uh, useful is that we ask the students to do the traditional way still, for example, learn geometry the hard way, you know, using ruler compass, they construct something. And then after that, there's a software, AR, VR software that comes in and um, makes the subject more interesting, enhance it, okay? 
Now that's geometry. Maybe another kind of subject is, um, let me see, is uh, algebra, right? For example, algebra. Um, maybe I, let me post it right here, okay? In the chat, uh, that is called photo math, okay? Photo math, okay? That's an app. Uh, so for example, you have like a algebra, uh, some, some equation, right? This is for high school kids, okay? And um, not, not high school, sorry, like a primary school kid. And, and the primary school kids uh, couldn't solve this. Maybe the parents are not around, the teachers are not around. And, and so they, the, the student probably could use this photo map, right? Scan it. And the software would guide the students to say, hey, I recognize the numbers. You know, you're trying to, trying to solve like a 12 plus two times something, right? So then uh, the software could, guide the students along okay i i i i i, I just posted uh this uh let me see uh let me see if i can okay um photo map okay uh the, the 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 link right um which is an app um okay I, i'm gonna post that on the chat okay yeah photo map dot app so that is a a mobile app that uses ar augmented reality okay then you will superimpose the answer, not the final answer, but you know, in stage, how to solve the algebra, algebraic equation. Okay. So that is one real world instance of uh, uh, AR with education. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So, okay, okay, that's awesome. So, first, uh, and I'm sorry. Okay, so do, uh, there's someone asked that, do we need some special requir requirement to build this project, this application? A requirement to build this application? Uh, uh, you mean the build the software? Yeah. Build the software. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think- yeah, uh, I uh, think uh, that, that's what hmm. they mean. Hmm. I think, I think uh, it requires a lot of uh, um, computer science yeah. knowledge, right? Uh, um, to write those mobile apps, software. Yeah. So certainly that means what? That means that uh, you know, if you're interested in this area, uh, do pick up some uh, computer science knowledge or computer programming knowledge on a mobile device. For example, uh, the mobile apps, uh, the Apple operating systems, they use uh, this Swift, uh, programming language um, or C sharp, we call it C sharp or Swift. And on the other hand, for the uh, Android device, Android mobile device, they use Java. So I think these are important programming languages uh, for mobile software programming. Okay. Thank, thank you, Dr. Tan. Uh, you. I think we would go to another question. Thank you for joining yeah, us you. today. Yeah. Thank you for taking your time. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pan. So that's for Dr. Pan. And we have uh we have another question. Maybe Kazet, maybe you want to Anissa, Bu Anissa. My voice clear enough. Bu Anissa. Iya, iya, iya. Sorry, iya. Yeah. Sudah, iya. Yeah. Terdengar, Bapak. Maaf. Iya. Yeah. Boleh saya menjawab pertanyaan teman-teman di awal tadi dulu? Ada tiga pertanyaan, biar saya langsung jawab. Boleh? Iya. Yeah. Iya, yeah. silahkan. Silahkan, Bapak. Oke, okay, thank you. So the first question from uh, Isnella, ada dua pertanyaan. Virtual reality technology can be used to support education and increase student learning effectiveness. How to use the technology for all subjects, especially social learning? I'm going to show you my uh, uh, slide. Just short one. Okay. Ini jawabannya ya uh, Bu Elis ya. Tadi pertanyaannya apakah virtual reality bisa diterapkan di pelajaran apa saja? Kemudian uh, bagaimana menggunakan uh, teknologi VR untuk di pelajaran? 
di seluruh pelajaran. Jadi pada dasarnya uh, virtual reality ini kan bottlenecknya itu uh, 3D. Jadi semua pelajaran itu dapat diintegrasikan dengan membuat 3D atau objek uh, dari dari apa? Dari yang sesuai dengan keterkaitan dari mata pelajaran. Dan dan semua ini kan karena berbasis uh, visual ya, virtual, virtual, virtual jadi uh, pelajar apapun bisa dikoneksikan. Nah ini saya kasih contoh uh, beberapa produk yang sudah dilakukan atau sudah dikerjakan di Vioner uh, VR, hasil dari pelajaran-pelajaran kita di berbagai provinsi. Ini salah satunya di, untuk tematik SD, kemudian juga ini pelajaran sejarah, ini kalau tidak salah apa pembabakan ya, atau periode. Kemudian ini untuk SMK, teknik mesin, bisa juga digunakan. Kemudian ini ada pelajaran bahasa. Di sini contohnya ini bagaimana VR digunakan untuk pelajaran bahasa Arab. Kemudian juga pelajaran IPA dan masih banyak pelajaran lain seperti matematik itu, dan agama itu support. Jadi tergantung bagaimana kreativitas kita, inovasi kita, sehingga kita bisa membuat pola-pola yang bisa terkonek langsung ke mata pelajaran kita untuk murid-murid. Kemudian pertanyaan kedua dari Oke, ini pertama si pertanyaan pertama saya akan perhatikan lagi ini data dari 5610 siswa yang kita survei di periode pertama di tahap pertama. Ini sekali lagi ini yang kita lakukan antara kerjasama antara IGI dengan teman-teman dari Milia Lab karena kita memang menggunakan Milia Lab platform yang uh, buatan lokal ini dari di wilayah satu dari 1867 siswa ini kita ada sudah ada datanya jadi kita based on riset uh, yang bisa dilihat dari apa hasil terakhir apakah uh, murid-murid itu menyukai menggunakan fitur virtual reality tempat konvensional ini 76 persen menjawab lebih menyukai hal-hal yang berbau inovasi termasuk virtual reality yang kita tawarkan Nah ini di bawah juga ada kelihatan tuh apakah metode ini memberikan kemudahan untuk memahami subjek. Ternyata virtual reality ini uh, sangat membantu murid-murid. Ini gambaran umum di Kalimantan Timur juga 83 persen. Uh, ini pelajarannya bisa dilihat ya beda-beda ya. Ini, ini untuk guru-guru mata pelajaran bahasa Inggris, PJOK, kemudian ini bahasa Arab, matematik. Semuanya di atas 50 persen mengatakan bahwa virtual reality ini sebuah inovasi dan bisa... Uh, apa murid-murid juga guru-guru bisa lebih memahami terkait dengan pelajaran yang yang uh, diberikan ini matematik matematik bahasa Inggris ekonomi ini kita lakukan di tahap satu biologi bahasa Inggris ini di SMS Banten ada Bu Fajar kalau tidak saya ikut masih gabung sini di SMK 9 juga nih tentang simulasi digital desain grafis dan percetakan juga 76 persen mengatakan bahwa virtual reality sangat baik. Nah, ini sekedar, sekedar uh, gambaran secara umum yang sudah kita ringkas tadi di awal presentasi saya. Kenapa kita melakukan uh, pendekatan secara riset? Karena kita ingin melihat bahwa evaluasi-evaluasi ke depannya ini benar-benar terarah, terukur, dan bisa digunakan untuk uh, virtual reality yang lebih, lebih, apa, lebih modern lebih uh, pembelajaran yang kita lakukan pun lebih uh, berkemajuan. Ini wilayah tiga juga kita dari 2099 feedbacknya jumlah sekolah biar masih di atas 64 persen. Nah ini gambaran umumnya, ini aktivitasnya. Nah, kemudian ini pertanyaan kedua dari Ibu Uis, uh, what effort will IG do so that teachers throughout Indonesia can apa, can make how we are technology for learning. Jadi di Ikatan Guru Indonesia, moto kami itu mulai dari yang sederhana, dari yang paling bisa kita lakukan. Apa yang bisa sudah, sudah bisa kita lakukan? Kita sudah punya trainer-trainer di seluruh provinsi yang mereka mereka akan membagikan kembali ilmunya ke teman-teman yang lain. Termasuk kita sudah memiliki sekolah-sekolah yang sudah kita berikan. Uh, fasilitas untuk virtual reality ini secara gratis, secara gratis loh ya. Ini dari Milia Lab secara gratis. Termasuk nanti master trainer yang akan kita gelar semuanya akan dibiayai secara gratis oleh uh, Milia Lab di tahapan-tahapan uh, pelatihan. Kemudian pertanyaan uh, selanjutnya dari Mr. Wit. 
may my school propose to get the training shirt you can propose your school we will open for registration for the uh, master training and then also another training or workshop uh, will open as soon as possible maybe uh, on april and after july will open uh, kalau kalau tahun ini kita punya 100 sekolah pioneer vr uh, tahun depan itu harus bisa tambah target igi tambah menjadi 500 bahkan 1000 virtual reality school ini kenapa kita ingin memberikan efek yang baik kepada teman-teman bahwa teknologi yang ada ini teknologi yang kita miliki bukan hanya bisa dirasakan oleh teman-teman guru yang ada di perkotaan tapi bagaimana kita bisa membagikan juga ke teman-teman di daerah termasuk di daerah 3T tentu dengan tantangan-tantangan yang berbeda tapi ini adalah sebuah itikat baik yang mudah-mudahan ke depannya virtual reality ini bisa menjadi salah satu eh, alternatif inovasi untuk kita bersama sehingga kita juga bisa memunculkan produk dari dalam negeri dari guru-guru bahkan dari siswa sendiri the last question from Adi Hidayat, is there any suggestion from experts regarding the use of VR in terms with the age of audience of student and with regard to the type of student subject to teach where VR is effective enough to implement it? So, jadi pada dasarnya virtual reality ini cocok untuk segala usia dari uh, maksudnya dari 4 tahun dari tingkat dari umur 4 tahun. Under 4 years old itu under harus di bawah supervisi orang tua. Nah, memang kendala tentu bukan saja di virtual reality tapi di platform apapun yang perlu diwaspadai atau perlu di bawah supervisi adalah durasi lama durasi kita uh, melihat langsung monitor gitu. Nah itu kan memang uh, apa, kesehatan mata memang terganggu. Tapi uh, di VR di produk premium itu sudah diminimize uh, supaya ini rendah uh, apa namanya rendah tingkat uh, resikonya terhadap kesehatan mata. Yang terakhir kali ini adalah satu catatan dari kita dari IGI bahwa uh, teruslah kita bergerak dengan memotivasi guru-guru di sekitar kita dengan kebaruan karena kebaruan ini termasuk virtual reality, uh, virtual uh, reality atau AR teknologi ini adalah bagian dari perubahan dan kita ketika kita mau merubah mindset kita mau merubah pola pikir kita mau merubah gerakan-gerakan kita tidak ada yang tidak mungkin kita lakukan untuk lebih besar di, untuk Indonesia ini maka Mari kita sama-sama untuk bergerak menggerakkan kalau untuk teman-teman IG yang hadir di sini atau mungkin partisipan IG tentu sesuai dengan tagar kita IG untuk Indonesia IG Go International. Thank you. Oke, thank you Pak. Terima kasih. Untuk pertanyaan selanjutnya Kak Az mungkin bisa dipimpin. Oh, iya. uh, ini ada satu pertanyaan nih Kak untuk Mr. Vasily. Can I are you stand by here? Mr. Petra. Yeah, hello. Yes. yes, hello. Yeah. Here is any question for you. This is okay. from Okay. Uh, can VR ML or virtual reality modeling language which developed in the early um 2000 be integrated with augmented reality or unity perhaps through import or export model? Uh can you repeat second part okay, of is, question? Yeah. Okay, sorry. This is about virtual reality modeling language, um, which developed in early on 2000s. And this is be integrated with augmented reality or unity. And this is can, can that import or export model that is from virtual reality modeling language. Uh, as far as I can understand, uh, yes, you could uh, export uh, models and uh, content from virtual reality. There are a lot of uh, plugins that you could use for that. And uh, uh, also, as for first part of the question, uh, mm -hmm. you could maybe join uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, but uh, it maybe would be not so comfortable for users to use it okay thank you okay thank you um kanisa mungkin ada lagi saya kayaknya menemukan cuma satu aja nih buat mr vesili <laughs> okay so we have uh, another question miss anisa and miss ini i'm so sorry i have to leave the meeting because oh, i okay. i think my account is hacked by someone so i need to yeah, make, yeah. verify and okay. to change my gym thank you very much 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have another question for you, Mr. Asli. Is uh, actually because you work in team, right? So this is quite a question from Indah Puspita Sari. So she asks how to make the team work effectively. So as for making team work effectively, we uh, noticed that our students uh, is motivated because they see what uh, they will uh, produce, what will they uh, develop. And uh, we started from uh, uh, showing them uh, every technologies that they could uh, educate for and uh, also possibilities that will uh, them get uh, after they educate that field. And uh, after student understands that he would uh, develop uh, VR applications, uh, augmented reality applications and others, and also that he could uh, participate in different uh, competitions uh, it helps us to motivate them, and uh, after that, they participate. Okay, uh, here is any one question again for Mr. Vesili. Um, can you tell us about how to motivate the student to be spirit on that project? I mean, uh, it's mean on your project that is how to what is your step to motivate your student to get that project uh first of all it was uh, uh, a big uh, like a conference or lecture when uh, we talk about uh, ideas of that application and uh, after that uh, uh, we give a promotion to uh, join our team uh, in order to hone their skills and also make something that could uh, they uh, use in future like portfolio. And uh, as far as I can judge, it helps uh, uh, our team to involve uh, more students to join. Okay, thank you. Kanisa, ada lagi yeah, yeah, we also have another one. So as we talk, uh, or a lot of us talk about the development of AR and VR technology, and is there any downside of the AR of, or VR technology? Is there, it, it, is it could be dangerous, like maybe for the eye strain or something like that? Uh, so, as for virtual reality, I strongly believe that uh, it's a good idea to uh, don't use it uh, for youngest uh, child. Uh, as far as I remember, there are a law that uh, allow to use virtual reality when you are older than 10 years, maybe. As for mm -hmm. augmented reality, it hasn't got any uh, limits, so you can use it uh, without any dangers, but uh, it depends on technology. For example, when you use uh, your tracking technology, uh, such as uh, applications like uh, uh, it was uh, about Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Uh, when you use uh, geo tracking uh, technology, it could be dangerous uh, because it depends on location. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is that okay? Okay, uh, maybe, Kazir, do you want to add something? I'm sorry. Um, wait a moment. Mbak, uh, sorry, interrupsi ya. Ada pertanyaan untuk Pak Jos itu. Oh. For the keynote speaker. Okay. Perlu saya bacakan? <laughs> ya, yeah, please, please. Oke, okay, saya bacakan ya kalau begitu ya. Uh, pertanyaannya, sudah saya chat ke nomor beliau. Dari Pak Agustinus Mulyono, SMP Jonggolan, to everyone. Uh, to keynote speaker, 
it, I don't know exactly, K-37. The needs of students by making them believe that they are actually present in the virtual environment to get involved with it, it reduces the time and effort for teacher to convey the message or to different level students. But the virtual reality makes the children get immersed in the virtual environment and they may lose their self and may lose their self. Augmented reality is good at certain age where children can differentiate between reality and virtual reality. These are my thoughts. Please give me your comment for keynote speakers. I need it. Pertanyaannya tentang, yo kalau bisa bedakan, nak urung iso biye. That's it. Pak Jos. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Di sini saya akan mencoba menjawab di mana sesuatu yang berbeda itu karena ada perbedaan antara waktu yang akan terjadi dan waktu sekarang dan waktu di masa lampau. Mana kita membicarakan mengenai VR dan IA, dan kita sedang menuju ke sana di masa depan, ya. Di sini maka mau tidak mau kita akan ikut ke sana dan tidak akan bisa terelakkan. Kita harus bisa memberikan pertanyaan yang jelas kepada anak-anak atau kepada orang-orang uh, yang memang secara usia belum bisa mempunyai kemampuan untuk membedakan itu. Jadi di sini yang mau saya tekankan adalah zaman akan berubah dan kita tidak bisa menghindari perkembangan. Nah, sekarang sudah tidak ada lagi anak-anak yang hampir tidak ada lagi ya mungkin anak-anak yang tertarik dengan sebuah bacaan yang bersifat hanya buku ya, ya. ya kemudian dua dimensi tidak dengan sesuatu yang berbau mobile pun ya berbau digital berbau teknologi dan mengasihkan seperti di situ dan mereka bisa asik sendiri dengan dunianya sendiri bahkan kita pun ya tidak hanya anak-anak tapi kita pun orang dewasa kadang juga hampir satu hari itu kita tidak bisa lepas dengan keasikan kita sendiri di dunia dan mengenai virtual reality ini memang sudah dari dulu dicanangkan bahwa ini akan menjadi dunia kedua di mana dunia inilah yang akan dunia kedua di sini ini maksudnya menjadi tempat kedua kita di mana dalam dunia virtual ini nantinya eksistensi kita juga akan diwujudkan di situ pembelajaran juga melalui hal itu sehingga hal ini tidak dapat terhindari tidak dapat terhindari di sini memang mau tidak mau kita akan tenggelam di dalamnya kita akan masuk ke sana dan akan sampai ke sana dan akan pada masanya akan masuk ke sana mau tidak mau itu akan terterapkan dan akan terpaksakan untuk kita bisa gunakan dan harus digunakan. Jadi itu komentar saya. Kita persiapkan diri kita baik-baik. Kita tahu apa yang akan terjadi di masa depan. Kita persiapkan pemahaman kita. Kita persiapkan batasan-batasannya. Kita persiapkan mana yang baik, mana yang tidak baik. Ya, tentunya biar dan biar ada juga sisi tidak baiknya. Nah, sehingga memilah-milah uh, ikatan guru Indonesia 
kita masih bersama-sama bisa memilah milih mana teknologi yang milih. kita sudah lihat nih, di depan sana sudah ada sesuatu apa yang akan kita lakukan A atau Uh, maaf, tapi ya, ya, oke okay, sudah masuk lagi. Ya, masihkah? Ya supaya ke depan itu kita akan lebih siap lagi karena sesuatu yang akan terjadi di masa depan kita sudah lebih tahu dulu dan kita sudah ada persiapan dulu dan kita sudah mencoba mempraktekkan dan melakukan dan mempunyai pengalaman dengan apa yang dinamakan AR dan VR ini. Demikian jawaban saya Pak Mampu. Oke, okay. terima kasih. Itu Baik -baik. ada pertanyaan Baik. untuk saya dua, bisa saya jawab? Oh silakan Pak. Ini baru saya mau tanya ke ternyata jadi kan udah lihat. Ini saya, <laughs> saya nyambi jadi ini berarti ya. Oh iya. Nyambi jadi <laughs> moderator. Oke, okay. eh, saya bacakan ya. Tuh Mr. Mampuono, can the VRML or virtual reality modeling language that developed Maksudnya, that was developed in early 2000s be integrated with Melia Lab, perhaps through import and export models. Uh, to tell you the truth, that Melia Lab is a product uh, company uh, uh, which produces uh, the uh, application for. Uh, for virtual reality for learning in Indonesia. And to tell you the truth that I have never ever opened the uh, Melia Lab. But if you're talking or asking about how to import, how to export models, this is about the application to create uh, three-dimensional models like maybe Blender or maybe 3ds Max or Maya or Unity 3D or a PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, if, if you are talking about model, the 3D model, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, 3D models is provided in the internet that we can, we can download that and then we can import into PowerPoint event. For instance, I will show you how to do that, okay? Uh, I will try to share my uh, PowerPoint, uh, for instance, like this. Uh, okay, I've made a new slide. And then in the new PowerPoint, uh, especially PowerPoint for two, uh, in Office 2019, or the newest application of PowerPoint in uh, 365 Office, Office 365, like that, okay. Uh, wait a minute, ketutupan, uh, okay. My, the pattern covered by one of the, part of the uh, Zoom. Now, uh, we go to CCPCAN or insert, okay? We go to insert, and then this is 3D model here. And then, for instance, I've made, I've made, uh, wait a minute, Photoku, uh, uh -huh. this one. I've made in uh, 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 Microsoft 3D Paint, this one. This look like two dimensional picture, but I can, okay, like this. So in animation, we can have, for instance, like this. Okay, this one. Okay, or maybe three uh, D models with uh, 
3D models. I'll try to insert once more the 3D models with animation. I can go to the uh, 3D builder and go to P like this. Oh, wait a minute, uh, not this. Uh, wait a minute. Insert 3D models. I've made this, uh, I mean, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The B with animation. Maybe here. Oh, B and B. I have, uh, okay. Uh, this problem with the three dimensional object that I've, uh, I've made, but I'll try to uh, give you another tips of how to make PowerPoints uh, become more powerful with three dimensional object. I'll Okay, insert one object, uh, this one. This one, yep. This is a tower but it's made from wood, wooden tower. Okay, I've made a additional object for this three-dimensional object. Now, we can have an animation to this, like this, for instance, this one. And we can manage the time for the animation. I can have the animation. Okay, continuous. So like this. And after that, I'll duplicate this to For instance, I move this here and I make this bigger. Like this. And I delete this. And we have to make sure that the transition of the PowerPoint is move. So the object can move smoothly, not only smoothly, but also uh, beautifully, like that. Okay, let's try to have a PowerPoint show for this. Uh, to tell you the truth that this object is rather a bit hard for the computer, so, uh if the three dimensional object with the um, complicated polygon a lot of uh, dotted or uh, a lot of uh, curves a lot of uh, what's so called the angles that is made for the uh, three dimensional object uh, it's rather a bit hard, but this is it. I'll try to show you. Yeah, it takes uh, 
rather bit time to perform. So this one, if I click uh, this PowerPoint, there will be a turning of the three-dimensional object. Wait a minute. This one, you can see. And then so this one. So if I go to the next slide, the transition, which is called as morph, will make this object smoothly uh, move to the next, like this. This is the next slide. It's beautiful. So this is just an example of uh, how easy to make a uh, virtual reality in our own laptop. This is it. Yeah, saya kira begitu, Mbak. Iya, Pak, kelihatan. You see a lot of there are a lot of uh, three-dimensional object that we can import and oh. even uh, enter it into our presentation. Hmm. Um, here is a question once again, maybe. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. This is. Can you give a sample for technology in technology more yang tadi itu pak untuk di pendidikan? Jadi selain study for language, wisata museum seperti yang Pak Mampuono tunjukkan tadi pas di presentasi. Dan buat belajar sejarah seperti yang dikatakan Mister hmm. Petra tadi, kira-kira ada yang lain nggak Pak? Contohnya itu. Eh, kalau kita membuat sendiri, otomatis hmm. ya namanya guru ya. Dia kalau bisa dikoordinir ya, yang punya keterampilan. Sebenarnya membuat objek-objek tiga dimensi itu tidak complicated ya. It's not too complicated because this is like Uh, this is just a habit. If you 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 have a good habit in producing the three-dimensional object, I think it's okay. Maybe mm -hmm. the most complicated one is the algorithm. If you want to produce a application in three-dimensional or a virtual reality, like for instance, Melia Lab, or maybe in two dimensional object is a, a persona two or something like that yeah um, so uh, it needs a hard programming because uh, you have to know uh, artificial intelligence how to produce something using deep learning it might be a neural network it should be a solid team to hmm. develop a software but for just a uh, three-dimensional object, maybe with the bones and then also oh. with the application, the uh, chip and free one like Blender, or maybe yeah. using just the most, uh, sim the simplest way in producing like what I've made, like my photograph with the uh, uh, board, uh, with the texture of wood, something like that is just using uh microsoft 3d paint it's oh, very easy and it's it's, more yeah other. and it can can be saved and imported to other oh. application maybe you want to bring it into unity 3d to to mm. make that as a part of augmented reality there or maybe you want to make that as a part of game in a unity 3d something like that it could be export and import I think like that. So if you, you, you're asking about um, the other uh, the other examples of uh, having this act, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality in any uh, uh, subject, mm -hmm. I think uh, you can go to, for instance, Melia Lab or other, there are a lot of it. A virtual reality uh, uh, application that is uh, uh, offered to to us, especially uh, like uh, you want to have this in 
and trade. There are a lot of, yeah, there are a lot of company who provide a premium and free application in Android. Or even you want to go to involved in a community in another world, like a 3D community or virtual reality community, there are uh, tens or uh, maybe more than 100 community uh, who, uh, which offer this kind of another life, living yeah. in different uh, atmosphere, different world with uh, a lot of uh, thing that you can enjoy inside. Hmm. Mono, mbak, gira-gira, mbak. Yeah, gini, pak. Basically, kan, aplikasi itu banyak yang mahal, like, has, um, what is that? 3D, 3D object, maybe, like a blender. This is a big, big, besar, apa ya, berat gitu loh, Kak. Uh, jadi begini, kita bisa memilih yang low polygon ya. Jadi yang yang objek-objeknya oh. tidak terlalu rumit. Uh, kemudian juga kita nyari yang free, tapi yang, uh, yang Karena... bisa, kan itu ada aplikasi juga untuk kompres supaya tidak terlalu hard ya polygonnya. Ya. So, uh, for instance, I give you an example using a PowerPoint, and then for instance, you want to explain about Heart. So you 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 can have uh, the PowerPoint to uh, you can put uh, buttons there. If you click the button, it will show. It's turning, showing something. You can click that for uh, halting the turning, and then show to the student uh, and click something. It uh, uh, it will appear comments or pop up uh, pop up menus. Something like okay. that. It's easy. Yeah, I okay. just make sure that teachers can make that because teachers is very useful. Teachers have good habit, especially teachers in Iki. PowerPoint. You just upgrade your PowerPoint into 2019 or just go to uh, Office 365. Or we will have a training. Yeah. I offer a training and we can go together, but uh, maybe the requirement is that you have the account of 365 office yeah, office. You get number five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, that's, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, so we have another last question for first of all, State University. Okay, so. Uh, probably Mr. Fasley or one of his colleagues could answer it. So it could be a general question, question like what, like what we could expect, expect for the AR, AR technology in the future. Uh, can you please repeat it? It was a luck. I can't hear it. Okay. Okay. So what is the what what do we expect? in the future of AR, VR technology? Uh, okay, uh, as for augmented reality, we could expect uh, that it would uh, improve uh, recognition technologies. For example, uh, nowadays there are a lot of programs that use uh, center recognition technology. When you just uh, use your phone and uh, track uh, huge locations, such as uh, huge monuments or huge buildings in order to track the scene, and uh, after that, uh, find some uh, additional uh, content at this building. As for virtual reality, I suppose that uh, everything leads to uh, make a more easier way to uh, enter that virtual reality. I'm talking about helmets uh, that uh, would be more uh, easier to use without any cables without any uh, heavy uh, equipment. Also, as far as I remember, nowadays uh, a lot of virtual reality program programs uh, are used uh, uh, used uh, not only virtual reality but also uh, additive reality when you uh, see what is happening uh, forward to you and uh, additional content uh, from uh, 3D models, for example. Thank you for the question. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Petraka. Okay, so thank you for joining us today. I guess that's the last question in this Q&A question uh, for the all the speakers that Mr. Danang Hidayatullah from the from IGI and Mr. Mampuono, also Dr. Tan from City University Hong Kong and all of the speakers from Sefas Tofokpol University. Thank you for joining us today. I guess it's uh, already 4 p.m. in here. It's the end of our time in this webinar. Maybe, Kazet, you want to close this webinar? Okay. Thank, thank you for invitation. Yeah, thank you. Oke, jadi terima kasih untuk para audiens yang masih bertahan dan masih mendengarkan menyimak sampai habis ya. Untuk link presensi bisa diklik dari situ dan materi juga udah di-share di live chat. Itu saja mohon maaf jika ada kesalahan teknis atau apapun itu mohon, mohon maaf dan terima kasih telah mengikuti acara sampai selesai. Sampai jumpa di acara webinar selanjutnya tiap bulan um, pasti ada. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih 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 Terima Terima kasih, terima Terima kasih, Pak. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih dari Sulawesi Barat. Terima kasih. Terima kasih dari Tompu. Terima kasih. Terima kasih dari Bogor, Jawa Barat. Terima kasih. Terima kasih dari Sulawesi Barat.